Self-made versus store-bought. Which one's better? Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we will be discussing the difference between a homemade still and a store bought still. Now the two stills in question is the first still up is my still that I built on the channel. If you want to check out the video, the link will be up here. Now that still is a one and a half inch column still. It stands roughly 1.2 meters from over the boiler. We generally run it with a sight glass in place, but the sight glass is purely there for aesthetic reasons, as well as a small little reflux area with just three tubes running through the column at an angle. If you want to check out when I made that, still I'll link a video up here. The second still in question will be a three inch six plate column still with a deflagmator. Now, I know this is not a fair comparison between the two stills. It's two completely different stills. But this is just my point of view on having a still now that I've run a couple of times that has six plates and a very fancy setup compared to my old still that was relatively simple to build and relatively inexpensive if you want to make your own. It's just my comparison between the two see if there is any differences now the still was bought by myself for the channel from a company called Stiltec. now they offered me a awesome deal on the still to be used on the channel i did pay for the still so my opinions on it will not be uh, swayed it was not sponsored to the channel it was bought by me Let's quickly get into the differences. Now let's take the old still that I have been using on the channel for a while now. Now that still was built by myself to be able to do a multitude of different type of recipes. So from whiskey to brandy to vodka. Now if I pack the column with SPP or marbles or copper scrubbies and I run the still and keep an eye on it, I can comfortably pull between 90 to 93 percent ABV off of the still but it takes a lot of effort to ensure that I get that kind of high ABV every time I take a cut I need to then check the ABV to ensure that I stay within that ballpark if I drop a little bit too low I can increase the amount of reflux and decrease my takeoff speed to get to the to the numbers that I need to, especially when I'm doing a vodka where I'm running towards high 80s to low 90s to ensure that I get a nice clean neutral spirit. When it comes to brandies and rums and notas, those type of uh, products, including whiskey, where you're running at about 60 to 80%, you need to be able to control your ABV. With my old still, it was relatively easy. All I need to do is either change the packing to like marbles or a packing that doesn't offer that much of a rectification, if you want to call it that, and then get to that ABV that I require. I can still use my compression technique where I compress my four shots of my heads on that still by just using reflux. But as soon as I dial down on the reflux, I can then run my still as if it was a pot still but having a slight little bit of medium within the column giving me that slight bump in ABV that I need to get it to my target ABV but once again during the run I have to constantly readjust my reflux as well as my power in to ensure that I have that consistent ABV coming off of the still now if you want me to do a video on that exact subject where I discuss how to play around with reflux and power in to ensure that you get an ABV that you like. Please put it down in the comments and I'll see if I can do a video on that. Now, for the still that I bought for the channel, and as I said, it is a three inch column with six plates in it. Now, I went for the sight glass or the, the little submarine sight glass type of setup. Uh, instead of the full glass setups, number one, 
I'm very clumsy and I tend to break glass things. So having that extra level of protection with the little submarine side glass on the front just helps me out a lot. And number two, I think it looks hell of a cool having it um, looking like more like an industrial still. Number two, my old still was all complete copper. This still here is all stainless. Now with that being said, I did not forget about the copper. Now it's very important to have copper within your distillation. If you want to see a video on why it is important to have copper within your distillation, the Scottish, if I remember correctly, did an experiment where they had two stills running next to each other, one completely made out of stainless, the other completely out of copper, and they interchanged components with those two stills, and then they tallied the results by having a tasting panel. If you want to know more about that in detail, I'll link a video down below to Still Behind the Bench, which is an awesome YouTube channel that gives a ton of useful information. So yeah, check out the link down below to Still Behind the Bench for the complete video on why it's important to have copper within your still and in which portions the copper plays the highest or has the highest impact on your distillate. Now with that being said, this still here, I did not forget about the copper. The plates within the still is copper and if I'm not going to be using the bubble plates, all I will be doing is removing the bubble caps and just have that physical co uh, copper ring within the column. I also, right on top of the deflagmator, as you'll see in the video now, I placed a bunch of rash, uh, SPP or just some spiral um, copper wires within the top there to ensure that I have even more copper contact. And then on the opposing side, just before my deflag, uh, just before my shotgun condenser within that two inch spout, I placed a whole bunch of crushed up copper tubing pieces. So I have copper within the whole distillation. Cool. So for all the copper guys out there, I do have copper and I do understand the importance of it within this still. When I discussed my other still and I had to continuously play around with it, this still on the, on the other hand, no playing around. The moment you switch it on, you can run it either PID or you can run it with the SCR. I tried both of them out and at the end of the day, yeah, the still was as easy as switching it on and letting it run. Now I didn't have to play around with reflux, I didn't have to play around with power in or temperatures or anything like that. All I did is once I started getting takeoff, I just left the still on that point. I took off my four shots on my heads. The four shots in the heads came off at 94%. I had a slight drop in ABV into my hearts and the moment I tasted the, the hearts cut on this, I switched over jars. Don't worry, none of the four shots and heads went through the parrot. Everything was drained through the ball valve at the bottom. But the moment I tasted the hearts, I switched over to my heart collecting jars. Just for safety, I collected the first one liter of product in these 250 ml jars, just in case there was some janky little flavors in there or something that uh, I didn't want in my final product. Remember, I tried to run to neutral with this still as it is. I then started collecting into the bigger jars and then ended up taking a whole bunch of smaller cuts just in case, like with my old still, I started running into tails and the ABV gradually started dipping. With this still, there was no dipping. With that six plates running, and once the plates were loaded, I took off this product between 91 and 92% throughout the heart's run. There was no dipping in ABV, it was just consistent on that number. I came outside and continuously dipped the, the hydrometer down just to make sure that it wasn't stuck somewhere because it did not move. And then, Right at the end, I saw the ABV starting to dip. I took another last jar of that with the ABV dipping and then tails came in. The moment I tasted the tails, I stopped the collection. I just collected a little bit of tails, but the ABV started dropping off drastically. It went from 90 all the way down to 40 within a matter of about five minutes. So yeah, really simple to run a still like that 
compared to if you want to run a still like mine. Would I suggest you go out and you buy a still like that? The answer is if you want to, yes, absolutely go out, get yourself a still. The modular design of these bad boys makes it very useful, especially for me that does a whole bunch of different recipes for the channel. Now I can play around with the number of plates as well as the kind of configuration that I want to run it at depending on what kind of product I want to take off the still. So yeah, that versatility makes it nice and easy for me for the channel. But if I compare it to my old still, am I gonna stop using it? Not at all. I will still have my old still here. I love that sense of playing with the still to ensure that I get the ABV I have. It's awesome to have a nice piece of equipment that is pretty much set and forget and I can get consistent results. So if I wanna dial in a recipe, I can use that still and dial it in to a T and have exactly the same results time in and time out because of the way the still is built. Now, are there things I'll change on my old still? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm in the process now of redoing all the hot and cold water lines to those plastic lines that you see there or the uh, polyurethane lines that you see there as well as improving the reflux section and putting a proper and building and putting a proper deflagmator in place as well as a proper sight loss that just makes it a lot easier to use but in that in that setup i won't change anything no additional plates i love that column setup and yeah it's nice and simple and easy to run but it does take a bit of practice and that's what makes it fun will i change anything on this still well as it stands there i accidentally forgot to order a spool tube now if you don't know what a spool tube is it's the little standoff between the bottom of your boiler and your first segment or first sight loss you tend to want to have a little bit of a standoff there to ensure that you have um, a little bit of vapor travel before it hits your um, plates in case you have a rum or something that wants to boil over you're not going to push um, liquid onto your plates and yeah that just causes a mess of cleanup and so on and so forth i would like to add another three to five hundred mil piece uh, three inch column piece at the bottom there just as a spool tube and then after this run where i comfortably got between 90 and 92 percent without any adjustment i'm pretty sure if i start playing around with reflux and power in i might be able to get it closer to azeotrope but as it as it was no so what i'll do is with that 500 more piece or 300 more piece i'll dump some spp in there and just add a couple more theoretical plates within that spp so by the time the vapor hits that first plate it is at a higher abv so it's a lot easier to get to that azeotrope um, distillate when we want to run a neutral in conclusion that is my point of view on the two different stills once again thank you very much to still tech and the guys chad and the guys over there they did a stellar job getting the still ready and uh, also thank you very much for the support on the channel they graciously sent me a whole bunch of stuff with the still um, that we're going to be using on the channel please go down in the description support their website and uh, as always have a lack of day